Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Gracie's Kamen TV, the tourist man Black Africa. Yesterday, Raila Amolo Odega revealed to Kenyans how Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta called him and asked him to call or meet William Samoy Ruto so that uh, they could stop the demonstration, so that they could actually uh, intervene and maybe discuss what was the way forward because the country was getting out of hand as far as Raya Amor Odiga is concerned. So in this video, I want us to look at the reason why Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta intervened. For those of you who know or understand uh, Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta, Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta is a leader, a leader who will always intervene when the situation gets out of hand. And a very good example is the post-election violence of 2007-2008 when the Kikuyus were butchered in the Rift Valley and the son of Gena decided to intervene. And before Kibaki knew what was happening, the country was calm. So, he is a leader by all Argos. So why did he decide to intervene? this time round, knowing very well that he has been accused by the administration of William Samoruto as a man who was behind these demonstrations. So Raila revealed the reality. Number one in my view, why Uhuru decided to intervene is because of interest. You know, the Kenyatta family has vast businesses in this country. The Kenyatta family has a lot of properties in this country. The Kenyatta family owns huge tracts of land in this country. The Kenyatta family commercial businesses are so many. And if the demonstrations were to continue, Kenyatta family would be one of the greatest losers. So, the interest is very, very important here in my view. Number two in my view, when I look at um, our politicians, I've always said that these are political brothers and cousins and sisters. And they have very, very little ideological differences. They have so much in common and very little in conflict. In fact, for those of you who listened to uh, John Buddy, when he was asked about the Hasulas funds in Akino Paranya, when he was asked about the Hasulas funds, how they are going to address this issue, the bottom-up economic model, which they were opposing, the answer was very simple. That the only difference was semantics. Otherwise, there is no difference other than the name between ODM and UDA. These are political brothers and sisters. Nothing. In fact, when I told Kenyans the other day that um, we, we, uh, Nani, uh, Gashago is being supported by William Samuel Ruto Nemesis, that is Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta, many people do not believe that Gashago could be supported by Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta. It is possible because these people have common interests and their interests are converging. And any time their interests converge, they will move in the same direction. So it is um, uh, possible that he intervened uh, because of this. The other thing, thing is that um, there was a possibility of a massacre in this country. If you look at the number of people who died on 25th June 2024, when they overran parliament, the number, the figures, the official figures that we have could be actually a tip of the iceberg. Because you see, every day, people are still looking at their loved ones. There are people who went for demonstration never to be seen again alive. Even today, there are some people who are not known whether they are alive or dead. We have seen families moving from one morgue to the other. We have seen families moving from one police station to the other. We have seen families giving their numbers in public 
in search of their loved ones. I'm sure so many people died. What do you think could have happened if people went and captured State House? I'm telling you, we could be talking of a, of a massacre. So, Urumwe Kenyatta serialization and sympathizing with the youth that these people will die en masse. These people are very young. And the person they are dealing with is William Samorto, a ruthless politician. Uh, somebody uh, who want to retain power at the all costs, who, who cannot resign, could have motivated. You know, one thing I know about Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta, Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta knows William Samorto very well. He understands him very well. And one thing I know, and we have heard about it uh, from William Samoruto's mouth, is that he cannot leave power. Remember when he said that he wanted to strap Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta, when Uhuru wanted to give up and surrender the leadership of this country to Raya Morodega. So that time, William Samoruto was the deputy. So you can imagine. So he, Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta knew that a massacre would occur. The other thing is that there was a possibility of the military intervening. And once the military intervene, the civilian rule is thrown out of the door. And once they intervene, I don't think there is a better term to describe a coup, a coup d'etat. So Urumwe Kenyatta, you know, he has so many friends from all corners, in the military, in the police force, even at State House, he has so many friends who will always tell him what is likely to happen or what people are saying. So sometimes, let us not blame Uhuru Mwegai Kenyatta. Let us not blame him. Maybe there is something that he knew and Kenyans don't know. Maybe by sending Raila to go and save William Samuelito, there is something that he wanted to stop. The other reason uh, is because, you know, when there is past struggle, there is a lot of assassinations. A lot of assassinations. So when you hear some of these people being blamed, came out Kenya uh, businessmen, who are behind this, and the one who are funding Gen Z's, Sujui Gashagwa, Sujui Nani. So, when you have power struggle, many politicians, are likely to be assassinated. Power is very sweet. And if you look at what happened in um, Rwanda during the genocide, so many politicians died. Mysteriously. So the fact that Uhuru Mwai Kenyatta has friends who are politicians, maybe we looked at them and sympathized with them and uh, most of them maybe they were innocent. So maybe Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta stopped this. Ladies and gentlemen, we also need to know why Raila Amoro Digam revealed this information to the public, the members of the public at this time. Why did he not say this initially? That's a question that we should pose today. Number one in my view. Today, if you invoke the name of Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta, you are able to cool political temperatures because Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta remains the darling of many Kenyans. He remains the most popular politician in the country today. Though he is not interested with the leadership of this country, he remains very, very attractive. People have very good things to say about uh, Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta. The other thing is that uh, when Raila said this, he would dissociate himself with the issue of the uh, broad-based government of William Samuel Ruto. Remember, at the same functions where the father of uh, Arima Masit was being buried, Raila said one thing, that there is no coalition government between him and William Samuel Ruto. William Samuel Ruto has also alluded to the same, that we don't have any coalition government. So Raila want to clear the air. The other thing is that... Um, Raila wanted to tell Kenyans, it is not yet lost. It is not yet lost. And don't be surprised if Uhuru, Raila, 
and Reshagwa unite behind Kalonzo Musioka. Don't be surprised. Because the way they are talking, uh, there seems there is something that is being worked behind the scene. And maybe Kenyans will, <laughs> will be shocked at the last minute. The other thing is that uh, you have realized that uh, Kenyans are not supporting the broad-based government. That is why you see William Samorito is always on top of Radlova trying to market and convince Kenyans why he formed this government. If it was good, he, did not, he does not need to convince the members of the public. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my take. I don't know what you think, but do you support Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta's intervention? Was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? Please like the video and enjoy your day. Till next time, bye-bye.